hello to everyone. Today we are going to talk about Metapath to Beck. That is a work done by Dong in 2017. And the table of context is the following. First, we are going to introduce the, what a Metapath is, then Metapath random walk, the model, so uh, Metapath to Vec and Metapath to Vec plus plus. We are going to see the training procedure, but uh, I cannot run it on my computer because uh, it's not enough powerful. And so we are going to see how to load a pre-trained model. Okay. Uh, so far, we saw homogeneous type of graphs that are something like molecules, uh, site sir, Cora. So uh, what are heterogeneous graphs? Well, they are uh, a graphs, graphs in which nodes and edges uh, have different types. So for instance, supposed to have this graph in which uh, the square can represent an affiliation, for instance, FBK or MIT. Uh, you can have circle that are authors, like uh, Long Antonio, uh, Santin Gabriele, and so on and so forth. You can also have paper, like P1, P2, P3. You can have conference, like AAAI, WWW, ACML, and stuff. And, and Again. Then you have also different type of links, like for instance, uh, a person, an author, it belongs to an affiliation that are the blue edges. Then you can have collaboration, like uh, two authors are collaborating together, or one author can write a paper. Paper can cite themselves, so a paper cite another paper. And also uh, another instance is uh, the paper is accepted to a conference. So this is, this is the idea of, of uh, metagra uh, of um, uh, heterogeneous uh, graphs in which we, can, we have this kind of nodes type, edge types, and they represent something. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> let's start with the definition taken from the paper. Okay, a metapath is a heterogeneous, in a heterogeneous graph, is a path following a specific schema, meta schema, I mean, metapath schema P. So a metapath scheme P is defined as a path that is denoted in the form of uh, V1 relation, V2 relation, V3 relation, and so on. And um, V1, V2, and VL, and so on, and VL are types of nodes. So let's see this as um, an example. Suppose we have the same graph on the right, the same before, and suppose that we have a scheme, a scheme P. Oh, maybe there is something it's trying to enter. Okay, admit. Um, okay, where we were? Okay, we were here. Okay. Um, suppose <clears throat> we have um, a, 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 a metapath scheme, like affiliation, author, author, affiliation. An instance of a metapath is FBK, outer LA, outer SG, and FBK again. Another instance could be MIT, LB, LA, FBK, okay? Uh, or another instance of uh, metapath scheme is affiliation, outer, paper, outer, affiliation. So for instance, MIT, LB, P1, LA, FBK. And it's quite easy to understand what a metapath is. So given a, a, a scheme, we have to build a, a path that's, that respect the scheme. OK, uh, let's now define the uh, random walks. OK, given an heterogeneous network G, in which we have V, 
E and T, which T is the um, type of nodes or edges, and a metapath scheme P. So the transition probability at step I is defined as follow. Okay, seems hard, but it's really, really easy. Let's start to say that the probability of node of a time E plus one, given the node at time E, so the, the previous node of a type T, okay? And, and a scheme, obviously. So uh, the question is, what is the probability of the, the next node given the previous node, the type of the previous node, and the, um, uh, and the scheme, okay? So uh, let's have a look at the last case. So obviously, if the edge does not exist, so it's not in E, so the probability is zero, okay? Uh, we also have this function here that uh, compute the type of a node. Uh, we can take a look at the second line in which we have that if the edge is in uh, exists, so is in E, and the type of the next node is different from the type required in the scheme, so the probability is zero. Otherwise, so the edge exists and the type of the node is equal to the one required by the scheme is just simply the proportion over the neighborhood with that kind of type of node. Okay, so it, it's quite intuitive. I think it's right, this uh, kind of uh, right is, is complex, but indeed the idea is quite simple. Uh, so um, the model is uh, identical to node 2 vec with the difference that, uh, I mean, the metapath 2 vec is identical to uh, node 2 vec. The only difference is that uh, is the uh, metapath random walk instead of the biased random walk proposed by uh, node 2 vec in a node 2 vec. Okay, so uh, given a scheme P, how the model works? Given a scheme P, extract, extract random metapath from the input graph. So we just collect some metapath. And then we use the skip gram model. We can have a look at the skip gram model, and it's really uh, identical what we have done with uh, net uh, node to vec. We did the difference that we didn't have the types of nodes. Easy. So uh, let's start with an easy example, and suppose we want to do some prediction of. Uh, A4, the node A4. So uh, the output is a matrices. As you can see, the output layer is a matrices of cardinality 12 multiplied by 8. Okay, 12 is the number of nodes because we have 12 nodes in the graph. And why 8? Well, because we have we can have a look to the neighborhood of A4. So time zero is zero. Then we have 12 multiplied by five because A4 is connected to A2, A3, and A5 and to P3 and uh, uh, CMU. Also to uh, P2 and KDD and also to ACML. So the final dimension of the matrices is a 12 multiplied by eight, okay? So, uh, okay, the model was really, really easy. The only difference is that we have this type of uh, nodes with respect to uh, node two back. 
The author of the paper, moreover, proposed a version called Metapath2Back++. So what is the difference? The difference is that instead of uh, having an entire output, they produce an uh, output layer for each type of node. Okay, for instance, uh, you can see that we have two nodes of type uh, uh, conference, so AC, uh, ACL and KDD. And if you can see, also the output is two, uh, also the, the length of the output layer is two. So we have five paper and then we have five probabilities. Then we have uh, two uh, affiliation, two dimension, three paper, three of three uh, columns, row, sorry. Then we have also to reason about the K. So uh, how big this, this matrix is. So let's start with uh, uh, A, uh, sorry, with the, 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 the venue. We know that is a two, and that the node A4 is connected to two uh, conference. So what does it mean? It means that the output layer will produce an embedding in a two multiplied by two dimension. Okay. So uh, in the case of uh, authors, we know that uh, there are five authors. I don't know why I wrote four by the way, uh, multiplied by three, not by, by four, because uh, it's the A4 node is, I mean, is interacting with four, uh, with three uh, nodes with uh, authors. I mean, in the case of uh, the affiliation, the node A4 as a only as affiliation of only CMU. What does it mean? It means that the output layer is just one vector, is not a matrix. And the same idea works for papers. Okay, so luckily uh, is already implemented with uh, in PyTorch geometric. And if you remember from uh, two weeks that the, uh, Gabriele's presentation, it's identical. It's really, really similar to uh, node two vec. In fact, if we have a look to the parameters of this class, we have uh, the edge index dictionary. That is okay. It's different from. Uh, node to back, but it's something like this. So uh, for instance, we have this kind of, we have a dictionary containing different type of relationship, like for instance, paper written by authors and is a two dimensional tensor. So is an, a, a list of edges representing the, 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 the the, the, the graph with that type of information. Another instance is venue published paper. So, and again, is a matrix, is, is, a, is a, an edge list represented as a tensor. So Metapath 2 back takes in input this uh, information. Then we want also to speci specify the size of the output uh, embedding so easy uh, the uh, algorithm also will wants uh, uh, the meta path so uh, outdoor road paper paper published in venue so okay that they are the key of the edge index if we want to be honest then what we have the work length the context size, the work for each node, uh, the number of negative samples, and they are parameters that are really identical to uh, node two back. Let's move to uh, the Jupyter notebook. 
to see uh, this in practice. Okay, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, 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 we can. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's start. I'm, as usual, I'm loading the, the data. So I, actually I'm loading the, 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 the module that I need. I'm using the data set at minor that is the same data set used in the, in the paper. And I'm also using the model we are going to use. OK. Uh, there is also the link to the paper and to the code, if you wish. So let's start uh, loading the data set, as usual. Specify the path and uh, download the data set. In the meantime, uh, the download go on, we can see that, uh, that if we print uh, the data, so the data set is a weird, let me say, uh, structure with respect to what we were used to see in the previous example. So in fact, the data set has uh, an edge index that is a dictionary uh, number of nodes that is again a dictionary, the Y dictionary and the um, Y index dictionary. So the data set since now is a dictionary, is a list of dictionary. So let's start by having a look. So I was not cheating, let me say. So the data, the type of data and edge index dict is a dictionary. And if we query the dictionary with uh, one key, so for instance, paper written by author, we can see that this one is an edge, uh, edge uh, list, simply. Not, it's, it's not, it's, it's, some, some, it's trivial, let me say. So uh, what else? The number of nodes dictionary is again, a, a dictionary and if we have a look at this we have that the paper has this number of nodes author has this number of nodes venue has this number of nodes and so on and so forth okay okay we also have uh, uh, the, 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 the why okay, again, again is a dictionary and we, if we query the dictionary with venue, for instance, we can see the label for each venue, okay? And also we have this index of the venue. So it's, it's, it's quite complex to understand this data set, but it, believe me, it works. Okay, so uh, let's start. Um, as usual, we move the data to uh, the device if the uh, CUDA is available. Is available. Uh, we tend to move the data to the GPU. Unfortunately, my laptop uh, has the GPU, but uh, it has two gigabytes of CPU, and uh, this data set does not fit the data. So I have to use the CPU, okay? Then, what else? As in the in the slide, I'm defining the meta path that uh, we are going to use, and I'm defining the, the 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 model. So just call the model and pass the edge index dictionary, the embedding dimension, meta path walk, meta path uh, the meta path here, the walk length, uh, context size, walk for each node number of negative samples, and so on and so forth. Then, as in order to VEC, the model has, oops, okay. Uh, as in order to VEC, the model has a, a loader, okay? And the loader allow us to query new uh, random path, actually, meta path random work. Me, random meta path, by the way. And uh, as uh, 
Gabriele did is really the same. We are querying and the loader produced uh, the positive random walk and the negative random walk. Well, there are not random walk, but it about to walk random, by the way. And if you have a look at this, for instance, one negative and one positive, well, both start with the same element, but then one of them is real, positive one, and the other one is random. So the negative is random. So what else? We also have to initialize the optimizer. In this case, we are using sparse atom instead of the usual atom, because the dot set is quite huge, let me say. Uh, what about the train? The train is goes really uh, easy. So put the model in train. We are saving the total loss. And for each index uh, and positive and negative num uh, uh, random metapath in, taken from the loader, we first of all apply optimize zero gar gradient. Then we compute the loss that is given by the model by default. Okay. And then we apply the backward and the optimizer step. Then what else? Uh, there are these two parameters, log steps and evaluation steps. So log steps means that every 500 iteration, uh, the, 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 the training process print out the loss. So that is this line of code. And every 1,000, okay, every 1,000, iteration it also print the accuracy obtained so far but it's it's just for see the result by the way what about the evaluation the evaluation is really easy so it's just this test function in which we uh, query the model and uh, we just test it here okay it's it's really i mean as as we did so far finally we have to train the model so uh, as i introduced you um the model does not work in my computer so i had to run it on a server actually um johnny run it on this in a server and give me the model the trained model, and here I want to show you how to load such a model. So um, we are here, and I have this. I don't have this. Wait a second. Hmm. I have my model, okay, is 2.5 gigabyte. And this one is the uh, trained model. So what we are going to do, we are going to load this model and try to predict it to see uh, something. OK. So how can we load the model? It's easy. First of all, we have to instantiate the model, as we did before, such that the structure of the model is the same of the one we are going to load the weights. OK, so instantiate the model. And in order to show you that uh, I'm, I'm not cheating with you, I'm going to also to print the only five weights of the model. OK, as you can see, this one, those one are the just five weights of the model. And now I can load the model out, simply load state dict. And then using the function torch load my model, OK? And OK, as expected, 
it doesn't work. Why? Well, this doesn't work because CUDA out of memory. Okay, even if I move the, the data to my CPU, when the, uh, the model has been trained on the server with the GPU and the model has been uh, saved, uh, the, the data has as default uh, to stay on the uh, GPU. And this is why my computer tried to load the data and move to the GPU, but there's, there is not in, enough space to do this. So what we can do, we can uh, use this function, this function here, that allow us to load the data and move directly to the to the CPU instead of the GPU. And then with this function here, load state each file. Okay. It's done. All case matched successfully. Perfect. In order to show you that I'm not uh, cheating, uh, I'm not lying. Here, if you have a look, the weights are changed with respect to, to the one we found when we initialized the model, like for instance, 0 0.97. And here we have minus 0 0.6. So it worked. What else? We can now uh, query the model and see what happened, what, what this embed, uh, actually how this embedding look like. So as usual, call the model, uh, pass the name of the dictionary we want to query, and also the uh, y index, uh, oh, sorry, y index dictionary. In order to plot them and play with the, the values, uh, we have to detach them from the CPU and move to NumPy. Okay. Just for having easiest result, to plot, I'm cutting to only 100 element. And what else? Now we have that uh, the embedding is in 126 dimension. And in order to plot it, we are gonna use something different today. Instead of using a PCA as last time, we use UMAP, that is an an embedder available online. It's a quite interesting method. And then we are gonna plot the results. To see, uh, okay. Okay, I have to update this was a test I did before, by the way. Okay, if we have a look at the embedding produced, we have the author in on one side and the venue on the other side. So it's, it's just a toy example because you can use this Metapad 2 vec to do really more interesting things, but as a, as, tutorial we thought that could be a good idea to see on something simple to to see okay uh oops sorry are there other questions i mean are there questions Okay, so I think we can close here. And um, so if there are no questions, I think uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Ah, sorry, UMAP is, um, uh, is a Python tool that allow you to reduce the dimension of a vector. So instead of use uh, PCA, 
you can reduce the dimensionality of a vector using UMAP. I think UMAP is uh, really uh, cool as a method uh, because it's fast. And also um, for us that came from the graph side, it works in a funny way <laughs> because uh, it took the, the vector as input and then it will the it builds the neighborhood graph of uh, the vectors and you can also specify how far the vectors and uh, when it has the graph he it use an algorithm to plot the graph with uh, a, an algorithm for visualization of graph and the out the the, the coordinates of the node are the embedding. So it's quite tricky as a, as a system, but it works works really well and I quite like it. But that's all. Are there other questions? Nothing. Okay. Um, I think we can close here and uh, next week uh, Gabriel uh, sorry Giovanni is gonna uh, present something about uh, benchmark on graph and see how to put together all what we saw so far and as I already told you um, the 4th of May of June of June, sorry, uh, Matthias Fey will joining us uh, to to the presentation, and he want he, he is gonna present himself uh, how the project is born, and next future developments and stuff like that. Okay, thank you to everyone, and I hope you hope to see you next week. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.